and then you have a big line, I think to me, to me it would be easier to see that. I, I agree that that's easier. I'm not sure that it's easier then like it is now. No, it's not. Because I, the yeah. reason I went through all the states at first is because the concept of the null transition may not have been straightforward. Yeah. But you're right, it may be better. I don't know. I don't know. I, I think maybe but I'm glad like, that yeah. at this point you're saying, hey, I can do all this at once. Because you're right, you can. You're right. So that means you guys are understanding, which is good. Okay, so B1, how many ors will I need? Six. Well, we've got six equations. So you need five branches. I'll need five branches, okay, because we've still got the straight through the top row. Oops. One, two, three, four, five. All right? Who hasn't helped me very much yet? Jerry. Make sure everybody. Make sure everybody else. Just threw you under the bus. You can tire tracks on you. <laughs> okay, I'll give you So what do you think, Mr. Plus? What should we do now? I know you can do this stuff in your sleep. That's hilarious. No, you've programmed Arduinos before this. Once you get this, it's going to be super easy. <laughs> Once I get it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Right. What do you think? Okay. So I'm looking at all B0s. Well, B0 is done. We're working on B1. <clears throat> All right, so in the previous one we started with the changing thing, the transition. But we, you can do either one. It really doesn't matter what order it's in. But yeah, we did start over here, so let's do the same this time. This is not helping me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so... No, I'm, I'm not... This is including. Not following? Okay. All right. That's, that's what I wanted to catch and make sure. All right, to program just this, mm -hmm. this is going to be one run, right? Right. And this will be an or, and the others will be ors. To program this, I'll need a set of contacts that are open, right. okay, or uh, not inverting. Mm -hmm. Because whenever prox is one, and b0 is one, and b1 is a zero, I want b1 to be a one. So do you see how I've got b1? at the end of the row here, okay? That's this right here. Okay. So I'm gonna put in some contacts for this one, this one, and this one, and see if you understand why I'm choosing the ones I'm choosing. That, that, and then inverting. Yes. And the conditions that go in, the things to sense, are the prox bit zero, bit one. Right. Make sense? Yes. Okay, so help me on the next line then. So it opened. Or a, that one in a non inverting. And then an inverting, okay. And then the simple one again. And non inverting, okay. okay. And what should I put in as addresses for these? The level. Okay, good. Is, uh, here. The R1 3 or 1 forward. 1 slash 4 is the level. 4. Yeah, it's not easy to read. It's right there. So I just pulled it over here. No. Oh, okay, I've read the wrong one. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. That's fine. And then what? Oh, just drag down the uh, bit zero and bit one. Right. Good. One more. I'm going to pick on you one more time. Just one more. Just one more. Because see, we've got these two done. Now we've got to work on those. So an inverted for level. Good. Inverted for level. And an inverted for B0. Okay. And then it's not inverted for B1. I haven't looked at it yet. Does everybody agree with that? Uh, yes. It looks right to me. I think that's fine. Good. Okay. All right. Anybody can jump in now. Tell me what to do. I'm not going to look at the board. I'm just going to put in the last, what, one, two, three, however you guys say, and then I'll check. Oh. Is it? Is it just me or some of this looks redundant or not? Some of it, there's some simplifications we can absolutely do here. Yes, you're right. Remember when we factored out before? We can probably get this down. Instead of having six rows, we can probably have four or three. Mm -hmm. And 
because a lot of times some of the rows will just cancel where uh, see how in fact here's one of them see how it doesn't matter where whether level is on or off we will get a one anytime we have b0 equals zero b1 equal one so we can simplify this in fact what we'll do is i'll save this version for those that aren't here and then i'll save a simplified version too so they can kind of see where everything went awesome. okay so we'll do both All right. in fact you know what Logic Pro hasn't actually crashed on me, but <laughs> there's a first time for everything. I like SolidWorks. Yeah. Guys. SolidWorks is a great program when it runs right. When it crashes and takes the last hour's work with it, it's not fun. Okay. All right, so which one are we out of? I think we're on the stop, aren't we? I don't know. You guys tell me. What do I want to put in? You need a not inverted stop. Not inverted stop. Okay, got it. And an inverted uh, B zero. Got it. And not inverted B one. Okay. Now what? Next line, everything is not inverted. So three of them again. Yep. All right. And then make that first one prox. First one should be prox, and then B zero B one. Yep. Yeah. Okay. What's next? Stop. Not inverted. Non inverted stop. Non inverted B0 and non inverted B1. Uh, it is, it, B1 is inverted. B1 is not inverted. Need a tiebreaker. B1 inverted or not? We're on, not the, we're on the top, aren't we? Top and bottom row here. Am I reading the right one? Yeah. This, this is the one right. Oh, no, I'm reading the wrong one. Okay. Right. okay. Yep. I, I don't say, care if you get in the video. This is informal. This is just for <laughs> your classmates that aren't here. It's fine. It's not going to go out and if you get a million views. It won't go viral. They just can't smell the pizza. Then the only good part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the pizza's pretty good, isn't it? Oh, it's tasty. Oh, yeah. The best pizza, pizza ever. Yeah, I think Matt's favorite pizza is. What are we <laughs> Whatever. Well, it's we're here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it makes it this far in the video. Hi, Matt. <laughs> we love you, man. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Yeah, I think you guys got it. Good job. So stop, not bit zero. Yeah, you got it. Now, there's a bug. There's already a bug. You know where the bug is? Uh, hang on. <laughs> bug, no, there can't be a bug. You're the programmer. You're supposed to do this right. Let me show you something. Do you notice that the value of this bit is going to be affected by this rung. Value of which bit? The value of bit zero is going to be affected by rung zero. Right. Then the PLC is going to move on to rung one and try to calculate bit one based on bit zero. It's already been changed. My point here is that bit zero and bit one are not independent entities. They're one thing together that represent the state that you're in. Mm -hmm. Over here I've been writing new all over the place. There's a reason for that. You can't just use these equations one at a time here, one at a time there, recalculate a new value for B0, B1 without saving those original values because it's those two values together that determine what next state you go to. So what we have to do is make one slight modification here. So I'll tell you what, uh, for those of you on the video, I'm going to save this and with no new bug. I don't know what else to call it, okay? Uh, actually, no, that's with the new bug. Uh, I don't know, it's confusing. Anyway, the first one has a bug. How about if I just call it bug one? I'll rename this bug one. That's cool. There you go. Now, the next one will not have that bug because what we're going to do is instead of overriding the value that we need later to compute with, we're going to just grab a different bit. I'm just going to go to a totally different word. I just went to word number one instead of word zero. So basically what I've just done is I've said let's not recalculate B1 yet. Let's calculate something that is at word one bit one whereas B1 is actually at word zero. Right? So that way none of this affects the actual state bit until later. So all of these, what I've just done is said this will be b colon 1 slash 0. This one is b colon 1 slash 0. 
This one is B colon uh, one slash one. Notice there's a difference. These are not the state bits. The state bits are here. Mm -hmm. That way I preserve the value of the state bits until all the calculations are done, until the first two rungs are finished. Okay, well that's fine. But then what? Well, I'll show you. Let me call these this state bit zero new and state bit one new. So I've just named these things the new bits. <coughs> things over there. Okay. Then what? Well, all I need to do is say, okay, rung zero, rung one have calculated what state I should go to next. Okay, let's actually go to the state. In other words, let's just copy the new values of the state bits into the actual state bits. How do you do that? It's a real simple run. This will be run two and run three. For the two of you that aren't here. So look at run two and run three. I'm going to cheat. You see what that does? So basically, rung zero and rung one will calculate what those state bits should be, where are we going, and then these lines, lines two and line three, actually take us there. Okay? That way, this rung, rung one, has a chance to compute state bit one properly. So when state bit one new is correct, then it'll pass. It'll just ride it over into here. Okay. Does it every time. So that way we're dealing with the state bits as a set and not as two separate things. Mm -hmm. Okay? That takes care of that, that little bug we would have had. Now, if I download this and run it, you know what's going to happen? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> yeah. Why? Because we haven't programmed the outputs yet for the states. We've got to make the mechanical system actually do something. But that's actually really easy. All you do is you program ones again. We don't have to worry about these two. But wherever valve is one, we just say, okay, what are the state bits? Those are the conditions for valve being on. Anytime. B0 is a 0 and B1 is a 1, valve is equal to 1. So help me write down that equation. So valve is equal to what? Uh, B1 and not B0. Not B0 and B1. If we yeah. put them in the same order, we would yeah, put it in. Yeah, sorry, I done this right? See how easy that is? Yeah. It's, it's simple. That's the output for the valve. How about the motor? The motor's not quite as easy because there's two ones to program, but I bet we can do it in one line down here. Yeah, motor equals what? Uh, B0 and B1. B0 and B1. Or, or good. Uh, B0 and not B1. B0 and not B1. Now, we could program it this way. But do you see a really easy simplification? B1 ended with it. No. B, B0, B0, right? B0. Just B0. Look, think about it. Let's look at the, the algebra for this. Let's back up. You could factor out B0. B0. But then B1 and its inverse, they're always That's what I was zero. Or one. No That's one. always a one, right? Yeah. Because anything ordered with the inverse of itself is always a one. Now you can see that another way. Look, any time B0 is on, motor's on. motor's on. That's all it means. That's all it's saying. Okay, so now we've got our equations for the motor and the valve. We just need two more runs to take care of those two outputs. Take care of the motor first and the valve second. Make sure I name them. You want to know what usually happens? Right about now, she crashes. No, I make a mistake somewhere, <laughs> and it doesn't work, and then I got to go troubleshoot it. I firmly believe that about a quarter of programming is writing the code. Yeah. About seventy-five percent of it is debugging. Sometimes it's the algorithm that doesn't work, and that's what's so nice about this. This algorithm, if you program it the way it, it's written. And faithfully copy it 
and in representing code, it will do exactly what you've defined for it to do. These things are a lot more bulletproof than the, the sequence machine that I showed you last time. Anyway, I'll stop selling it and I'll start uh, <laughs> working on it. <coughs> so, motor is just B0. It doesn't matter. You can use B0 new or B0. I like to use the statements themselves. It doesn't really matter. There it is for motor. And then the valve is just inverse of B0 and with whatever B1 is. We should have a working system. Let me see. Okay. What? If you stop it right under it, it'll fill it. <laughs> <laughs> Silo state machine, uh, let's just say done. Well, I made a mistake somewhere. Oh, okay. Got to be level sensor, right? Would have to be. The, uh, no, it wouldn't have to be the level sensor because level sensor never has to be triggered. For some reason, it is not going into the fill box state. Yeah. So it's when prox is triggered. So where is that prox is triggered? Uh, let's see. No way to say it's for B1. So that is here. Prox triggered. B0, not B1. So we should set B1 on. Maybe we told you wrong when you <laughs> put it in there. Yeah. I don't think so. Usually this is about the point where I give the students a break because I need the five or ten minutes to figure it out. <laughs> and then when you come back, I say, okay, here it is. We made a dumb mistake. So I'll stop the video at this point, download it, and then find the bug.